Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us uh, to our webinar today. Uh, we already got one uh, question or comment that uh, you couldn't hear anything, and that's because we hadn't started the broadcast yet, so you could see us, uh, but not hear us yet. So uh, apologize for the confusion. Um, anyway, uh, today's webinar is going to be our fourth one in a series of um, on the topic on SAP Fury authorizations. And in the very last one, in today's, we're going to focus on automation tools that can help you with simplifying and automating, not only implementing, but also maintaining Fury authorizations. So we're going to show a little bit of our um, automation tools that we've developed over the years and uh, tell you how you can leverage them to um, streamline, simplify, and, and automate. Uh, we're going to give it another minute or so before we actually get started, because there are still people joining. So we don't want to um, have to repeat the intro. So we'll give it another one or two minutes, and um, then we'll get going. Maybe in the meantime, uh, we're going to give it another minute. Um, make sure you, uh, if, if this is your first webinar of the four webinar series, make sure you watch the other ones because this one very much builds on the previous three ones that uh, Alessandro and Jenny have done. So we have included links in the, I think in the invitation of, for this one. So if you've received the invitation and the link for this webinar, then you should have also received the links to the previous recordings on YouTube. Uh, if not, let us know. Uh, but those are really, you know, the basis of everything that Alessandro will be presenting today. And um, now I guess it's uh, almost three minutes past the hour, so let's get started again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Alessandro is going to be your your speaker today. Uh, we turn on our cameras here initially, so you can see who the speakers are. Well, here we have pictures as well. Um, we'll turn them off then so you can really focus on the content instead of our pretty faces. And um, just a couple of um, administrative things before we get started. Uh, one is this webinar, like all the other ones, will be recorded. So you will receive a link from, um, I think, from GoToWebinar uh, directly. And then I'll follow up uh, with an emailing as well that uh, has the link to the recording. Um, and I'll also send out a copy of the slide deck after this uh, webinar. So stay tuned. It Give us maybe a couple of days to get everything together and, and bundle up, and then we'll send that out. Um, if you have any questions based on what you hear and see, uh, please use the questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel. So if you look at the panel, there are different uh, sub panels, I guess, and you might have to expand the questions one. It might be it might not be immediately visible, but if you expand it, you see a box where you can type in your answer. <clears throat> Sorry, your question. And um, if I know the answer while Alessandro is talking, I'll reply immediately. Anything that I cannot answer, uh, we will answer after the fact. So again, give us a couple of days and we'll send out a, a consolidated spreadsheet um, without any names, obviously, with all the questions and our answers. So you get those as well. And um, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, we're going to have a couple of announcements at the end, so stick with us. There is going to be another uh, very cool webinar coming up in February around um, IDM and Fury UI, so we, we'll talk more about that towards the end. And with that said, I'm going to hand it over to Alessandro to tell us more about um, automation tools and how you can use them to simplify your Fury authorizations. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Alessandro Benzer. Um, like in the uh, past three webinars, I want to you know, give you a lot of information and input. This time will be more about Know what automation tools can can do and how we can help you or you know, how a tool can help you simplify and speed up the implementation of Fiori or the maintenance of Fiori. Um, I have a, prepared a couple of slides, so we'll we'll stick to the slides. But then I also want to jump out to the system to show you how the tool works in the system because you know you we're all techie guys. We want to see how it works in in you know in in, in the system. And that's why I have a couple of demos um, throughout this webinar. Um, just a few words about Exciting for those of you that don't know us yet. Um, been founded in 2008 back in Switzerland. We're still headquartered in Switzerland. Um, that's you know where my accent comes from as well. Um, we have 80 plus employees worldwide. We have offices in Germany, Switzerland, 
in, in the United Kingdom, in Romania, and as of 2016, also in the United States. So we're fairly new to the US market. I mean, it's been more almost uh, four years, five years. So been around for a long time. Um, all our senior consultants are also SAP trainers. What does that mean? We're a sub-silver partner, but we have recognized expertise in different areas like GRC, security, authorizations, and so on. But then also we have a very close um, collaboration relationship with sub-education. So if you book an SAP training, and it's about, let's say, Fiori authorizations or authorizations in general, it's very likely you're going to talk to one of our employees, um, you know, an exciting guy um, delivering the training for SAP. So a very close um, collaboration relationship with SAP um, on the training side, but also on the consulting side and, you know, in general as a, as a, as a SAP partner. With that being said, I'll turn off my camera so you guys can focus on the content because now we're really going into the content. Um, just a second here. Um, for those of you that don't know the XMS or the Exciting Authorizations Management Suite, so XMS is the, the short word, I will use that throughout the presentation that stands for the Exciting Authorizations Management Suite, which is a third party tool developed and, you know, um, yeah, from by our company by Exciting. With XMS, XMS consists of seven different modules that do different things in the world of authorization um, maintenance. Basically, we can you know, help you and simplify role design, role maintenance, role testing, um, vulnerability scanning, code scanning. We can create security concepts you know, to audit your subsystems and so on. We have over 100 different use cases that we can cover with the XMS. So that's everything. Uh, the tool has been around for more than 10 years um, in use with over 500 global customers. So if you go and you want to talk to one of our customers, let us know. We can we always be happy to um, give you a reference. You can also go to our um, web page. We have different reference case studies with different customers. If you want to read a little bit more, what do different customers um, do with the XMS? The most common use cases we have here, you know, from you know building role redesigns, building these role designs, role testing is a big one. Then always managing and reducing SD conflicts, GDPR compliance, license cost is always a big a big problem. Security audits for our SAP systems and so on. There's a lot of different use cases. And today, again, we want to focus on Fiori and also a little bit about the S4HANA migration. And very often when customers move to S4HANA, you know, we have to do and we have to implement Fiori. Like I said before in the previous webinars, Fiori is not something that comes with S4HANA. So Fiori has been around for a little bit longer than S4. Um, we can install Fiori on, um, on different backend systems, like there's Fiori applications, Fiori apps for GRC. There's Fiori apps for BW, there's Fiori apps for the ERP system, for our ECC. But now with S4HANA, Fiori becomes more important. And that's why I also want to talk just very briefly about why, why it is important to consider and talk about Fiori when we move to S4. The um, XMS, our suite of tools, is also recognized and endorsed by SAP. So there's an SAP note that basically recommends to use the XMS for different use cases. For example, here I have one note that says, you know, when you do RFC user optimization, so if you do like an RFC hardening project, you want to take sub all the way from your, all your interfaces, use the XMS because that's the safest and most, you know, cost and time efficient tool to, to tackle such a project. And you can also see here, so it's basically recognized and endorsed by SAP, but also SAP themselves use the XMS. So if you hire sub consulting, sub security consulting to do an RFC redesign, for example, they will like, they will use the XMS to complete their project. So that's also a very strong relationship we have with SAP. And that also means that our tools, and they're certified by SAP, they're certified for S for HANA for different um, applications. That's all in place. And here's, a, you know, just one sub note that shows you, you know, the credibility of, of why the tool is, is so strong and why we're presenting it today. Also, what's important to understand with the XMS, I mean, it's an automation tool. It's a third party tool. Basically, you install it on your on, on your ABAP stack. Um, but what's important to understand is XMS is, is, is more complementary with your existing landscape. So if you have, for example, sub IDM or sub GRC, sub access control GRC, um, it's more complementary. It doesn't replace IDM or doesn't replace the Nexus control. It, it utilizes and integrates with all of those. So if you use in, in, in GRC, in Nexus control, you use the risk analysis, XMS can leverage that. If you use business roles in IDM, we can leverage that in the XMS. So it's basically a suite of tool that integrates with every, every single solution you have in, you know, in the world of SAP. That's important to understand. 
Um, before we go into more detail um, what XMS does and, and how we can help you be more efficient when you implement Fiori, I just want to spend a few minutes again on, on S4 for those of you that, that are new and haven't, I know we haven't had that uh, conversation yet. So S4 HANA, we all know it's a new product line from SAP. It will be the center of the, you know, the future data world and it will be you know, every customer sooner or later that you know, runs ECC and ERP today, sooner or later we have to upgrade um, to S4. With S4, SAP tries to do a simplification, which results in a reduction of applications and transactions. So basically for different or for one requirement, SAP only offers one solution. Versus today in, in the ECC, when we think about, and I have an example here, when we think about how can we register a vendor invoice, we can do that through the two different modules. We can register a vendor invoice through the module MM and or FI. And there's MM transactions that allow us to do that. There are FI transactions that allow us to do that. In S4 HANA, that will not be the case. In S4 HANA, we have one solution and that basically simplifies the two and that's now called invoice management. So that basically means there's a reduction of applications and transactions, which we basically then have to bring back to our role design, to our role concept, um, you know, to, to change out and give the users the new transaction codes or maybe a Fiori application to complete the task. That's important to understand. The migration or the pass to S4 is not a direct upgrade. So it's not like you're you know, installing a, or upgrading a, an enhancement package. It's, it's a new system. We can convert it. There's different approaches where we do green field, brown field, or blue field. There's different approaches how we can you know, integrate or implement Fio, uh, S4 HANA, but it's not a direct upgrade. It has to be a migration or a new implementation basically. With S4 HANA, like I said before, um, Fiori is not something that came with S4, but what's happening now with S4 HANA, Fiori becomes more mandatory. Um, I have it in brackets here because not everything is mandatory in, in, in S4. Certain transactions, for example, will be replaced with Fiori applications and that's, we have to use Fiori, there's no alternative. So that basically means it's mandatory for certain things. For other stuff, it's still, Either or, we can use the sub GUI with you know, regular transactions, or we can use a Fiori app, depending on um, how we want to deal with that in, in Fiori. But again, some of them require Fiori, and that kind of, I put it into brackets, it's kind of mandatory, depending on what you use in your system. So what does it mean? When we move to S4, or, or in general, we implement um, Fiori, the biggest problem is always we, we don't know what we get ourselves into. So there's a, there's a, a high effort to understand what's going on. It's a high effort to understand what applications do we need because it's similar as when we implement SAP. We don't know what transactions are available. So that's the same in Fiori. We don't know what applications are available, what is the business process that supports certain applications, um, and so on. So there's a there's a you know high involvement and high coordination effort between you know a technical team and a functional team to understand what are what are our requirements, what are the the, the apps that we can use to support our business process and our requirements, that's all you know, technically very complex to, to understand and to figure out. At the end of the day, we still want to have our, our business users to be able to work. So you know, there must be a, a, an easier way. Then also, once we know, you know what business processes we want to support, once we know what uh, Fiori apps we want to use, we have to technically implement those. So we have to basically you know, build catalogs and then groups, or if you're on S4 HANA 2020, you know, the pages and spaces. So we basically have to build that technical foundation. And that's a lot of work. So we, we, we looked in the last, web, last two or three webinars, we talked about the different tools from the content manager, the app manager, the, the launchpad designer that we can use to create catalogs, to, you know, to make the, the relationship between a tile and a target mapping to a catalog, and then how we can bring those into, into a group, so that you know the user has it on, on the launch pad. All that is very is a lot of manual work. And there's no must tools available um, as of today. And it's all very complicated to build in Fiori. And not complicated, it's more time consuming, I, I would say. Um, and then at the end of the day, also bring it back to our PFC Chiros so we can authorize the user. So there's a lot of steps involved that take a lot of time. And what we basically try to do with the XMS, we try to simplify all that. So we basically want to give you tools. Um, to mass create catalogs, mass assign target mappings and tiles um, to catalogs. We want you to be able to mass change things. So you created something, you want to mass change the, the descriptions or whatever it might be. That shouldn't be one by one. We want to do the mass. 
And that's what the tool basically does. So at the end of the day, we try to minimize um, the effort you spend, maximizing all the you know the, the output you can get. So not just you know automating certain things that are that are um, manual today, but also you know, give you more details, more insight into into your application and how you can build um, Fiori into your existing authorization concept and so on. So basically, it's all about the acceleration of of the of the implementation, you know, to be to be quicker to market, so to say. Um, what does that mean? Like I said, as for Han again, Fiori is is, is a requirement um, for, for 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 some applications. So what can we do with the XMS? So there's different ways again how we can approach a, a Fiori implementation. Like I said, you know, um, depending on what processes we want to do, what we want to implement, different approaches. But at the end of the day, we want to kind of use or utilize three different sources of data. The first one is the Fiori Apps Library. We talked about that um, heavily in the, in the past webinars where we can find all the, you know, the implementation information. We have app recommendation, um, different things that we can read from that Apps Library that contains all the Fiori apps that are available. Um, we can look into the simplification list. So if you move to S4HANA and do a mig S4HANA migration, um, with every S4HANA release, there's a simplification list. Um, that's more than 1,000 um, pages long. It's a PDF document. It's a good lecture for the weekend if you're if you're bored. It's a very long document to study. It's very complex and very difficult to to absorb. Um, but it's 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 a great source to find information about my migration. But then also the existing systems. Let's say we're in ECC and we're moving to S4. Our existing system tells us a lot about how our com how our company works and how our company runs. So basically, we know. The statistical usage data from transaction ST03N gives us all the information, usage information of what transactions, what web service, what web dumpros a user executed in the past. That obviously is a very good insight to truly see what was used. All that information in, you know, in SAP standard, you basically take it and then you manually process and try to map as much as you can. And whatever you would come up in, you know, in your mind with ideas, how you could match that. That's what we have packed into software. So basically, all your ideas you have, that's very likely we already have that. I had that thought earlier, many years ago. And all that is basically what XMS takes as a source. And then in the XMS, we can you know, work with that information to basically update our role concept. So you know, to build the catalogs, to integrate those catalogs into our roles, to provision, um, all that is part of the XMS. That's important to understand. So we basically, not only is it knowledge from us, but also we utilize all the information that's available there out there from SAP, from your system to basically help you um, build better roles and, and, and roles for Fiori. With S4HANA, there's different, like I said, there's different scenarios um, and different requirements depending on what you want to do. So there's certain things that are must have, like I just said, there are certain applications um, that are on, that only exist in S4. Uh, sorry, that in S4 only exist in Fiori. So let's say, for example, transactions like FI01, FI02, create and maintain banks, commonly used. Those transactions do only exist in Fiori. So there's no there's no up up transaction anymore to create banks. It's a Fiori app. So for that, for example, it's a must have to implement Fiori. There's no alternative. So you, we have to implement Fiori. Next to the must-haves, we also have the, the nice have, nice to have. So you know, that's now always the question. When I mentioned last time when we talk about you know going to Fiori and we, we, we call it Fiorization. So basically, what we want to do with Fiori or what we try to achieve is that an end user doesn't have to switch between the sub GUI and the Fiori Launchpad. So there's certain things that are, that would still work in the sub GUI. There's still transactions there, but then there's also apps available in Fiori. That we could use to replace those or enhance those um, ABAP transactions. And that's more nice to have. So it doesn't have to be in Fiori, but it can be. And it's nice to have, especially from a usability perspective from the end users. They only have one point of entry. They only have to log on into the Fiori Launchpad. You know, nice UI, easier to easier to handle than the sub GUI. And that's why a lot of companies, when they move to, to, to S4 and implement Fiori, we, we kind of go through a Fiorization. So everything should go into Fiori. And that's basically all the must-haves, the nice-to-haves that are there that replace 
um, um, legacy transactions. But then also transaction codes that don't have a, an app in Fiori, we can make them Fiori compatible and we can use them in the Fiori, in, in the Fiori Launchpad. That's another thing. So even transactions like, for example, SU01 or PFCG, where there's no um, true Fiori app, we can still enable, for example, SU01 as a transaction into Fiori. So if someone walks on to the Fiori Launchpad, they can click on user maintenance and then the screen will be like SU01, but in Fiori. We don't have to go into the sub GUI. And that's basically so we don't have to leave that environment, our you know, that that you know, unified experience from the user, everything remains in Fiori. And all that information, you know, we have to also um, process and then build back into our catalogs, into our roles to authorize the users. And you know, during such a migration and yeah, implementation, that's a lot of information that we have to collect and, and process. And that also what the tool does. And I'll show you how that works and I will show you a couple of examples. But all that the tool can automate and simplify. Before I go here, let me maybe just quickly jump into the system. I just want to um, show you one report. Um, so basically, I'm here in 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 the in um, in SAP. Um, it's my DEM system, my demo system. That's an ERP system. It's not an S4 HANA system. So basically, before I move to S4, we can already use our tools to analyze certain things. What I've done here, I basically scanned. Uh, a set of roles in this example here I scanned 43 roles so I didn't scan all my roles just a subset of it and basically what I can see here I have different reports and I'm here in a tool called role profiler the role profiler is a, a collection of reports there's more than 100 reports that do different things you know from analyzing um, data and also process certain data um, and here we have one section about HANA as a database and also S4 HANA some of the reports are grayed out. You can see that the HANA reports, but it's not a HANA database yet. So those reports will not be available. But what we can do is we can analyze the roles, the migration of roles to S4. Let me just rerun it to show you. So it goes very quick. I can just double click, it runs very quick. And then basically what I can see here is basically all my roles with the description. Um, some of them are German, don't worry about those. Um, it, it's just our demo system. But I basically have all my roles from PFCG, and then I can see based on based on a migration or in, in, in view of a migration to S4, what would be the change I have to deal with? So depending on your on the target, um, let's say you move to S4 HANA, you move to 1909 or 20, 2020 different HANA releases. Depending on the release you go to, you 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 set that in the, in the customizing. So right now it's set to 1909. So now if I would migrate my ERP roles to S4HANA 1909, um, I would have for, for different roles, I would have a lot of obsolete menu objects, for example, transaction codes. Let me show you an example. So for example, here we have a purchaser role. In that purchaser role, we have 177 obsolete T codes. So T codes that don't exist in S4HANA anymore. And for those 177, there's 12 new ones that replace a good chunk of those 177. If I want to see what they are, I can just double click. And then I can basically see here for different transactions on ECC, what's the replacement. So for example, here to change the vendor from an accounting view, FK02, the new transaction is BP. We talked about that in the previous webinars, the business partner concept that's now enforced in S4, so it becomes very important. And a lot of transactions are going to be replaced with BP. So the authorizing BP will become a little bit uh, more challenging. Um, some transactions, there's no replacement. Um, that's based on the simplification list. So for example, that information you can see here comes from a simplification list. So if you don't have a tool, you would you know, probably go through that manually and try to figure it out. SAP now introduced with, with the latest S4 release, there's certain reports in, in SU25 that we can use, but it's not as, as powerful as, as the ones we have, because we cannot just analyze, we can also do the changes. Um, what's important here, what I want to show you here, like for example, transactions like MB51, the material document list, for example, that doesn't have a replacement in as a transaction. The replacement is a Fiori app. And in my backend role, remember we have front and the backend role, roles in the backend role, I have to authorize a backend service for a Fiori app. And that's basically the, the indication here 
If someone wants to use MB51 in Fiori, uh, in, in S4HANA, it will be a Fiori app, and that's the backend service for that Fiori app. So all that information we have in our tool, um, we can analyze that, but then we cannot, like I said, we cannot only analyze, we can also make those replacements um, you know, fully automated. So that's 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 another step you know, in, in the view of S4HANA. But again, here we can see what would be, for example, the, the replacement for Fiori, and that's what we want to talk about today. So let me go back to the presentation. So again, the tool can analyze all that stuff, help us to you know, speed up the analysis and then also help us throughout the migration. So when we look at the different use cases, this again, is just a subset of, diff of use cases we have available. But just so remember from the previous webinars, um, to, for example, to, to create catalogs, to create the target mappings, to create groups, to um, transport catalogs, transport groups. We were not in that detail, been talking about transporting, but all that is basically very manual in SAP standards. So when we create a catalog, we go to the app, uh, to the content manager, we create it, we save it, then we add it to a transport, and then we can transport it. And that we have to do for every single catalog. If you want to add uh, a tile to a catalog, we have to select it, add it, select, add, select, add. It's all manual. Then we have to transport. It's all it's always a step that we have to do. With the XMS, um, we can do that all in mass. So we can mass transport, we can mass maintain, mass create. Everything can be done through an Excel file. So we, we're very, um, we like Excel files a lot because that's, as, a, as an IT person, we're all Excel um, people. So what we can do is basically for almost all our um, mass um, tools, we can source Excel as an input file. And I'm going to show you how that works in just a little bit here. So everything that I showed you in the previous webinars in SAP standard, that will still be available. But with XMS, we can simplify, automate, and you know, yeah, and, and make it much faster and more efficient when it comes to implementing it. We're not doing it better. I want, I don't want to say that we're not doing it better. We can just be more efficient about it to do that. That's that's what we try to do with the tools. Again, when the challenges, especially in view of an s hana migration, which, you know, based on your feedback that I got um, from the past three webinars, a lot of people are considering a move to S4 and then with that implementing it, implementing Fiori, like I just said, so with S4 HANA, Fiori is not longer optional. It's more mandatory because certain transactions will be replaced with Fiori applications. A lot of the requirements, we know when it comes to what app, what Fiori app will replace a legacy transaction, that's something we have to figure out from the simplification list. On 2020 now, we can use S S25 step for that. But then again, even if we, even now with S24, uh, sorry, with S25, we can figure it out. We still have to do the change manually. So it's still a manual step to change all the roles we have. Some of you have probably thousands or tens of thousands of roles that need to be changed. And that's a big step and a big a lot of effort. And all that can be automated with tools. Um, also, you know, when it comes to then basically once we know the requirements, building the roles, let's say you integrate them into your existing console, you build an entire new Fiori authorization concept. All that is manual work needs to be done. All that can be automated. And all that, you know, should be automated because it takes so much time to do. And I want to show you how we do that. So the advantages of using a tool is basically that we can um, determine, for example, all the, the requirements manually. Ah, sorry, automatically, not manually. So we basically, you know, we have that information from the simplification list. We can, with the simplification list, we can analyze your existing roles, your existing or your usage data in your system. And then from there, make a recommendation what apps you should use in Fiori, for example. And not just make your recommendation, but then also if you want to accept the recommendation to build the role automatically. We offer different interfaces, you know, with the Excel I mentioned already, we can import export data to create catalogs um, quickly and, you know, in, in mass. Um, but then also when it comes to the transparency and, and assigning of Fiori catalogs to, 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 to um, the roles, for example, all that can be automated. And let me show you that. Um, before I go there, I go back to the system. Um, let me go to the S. We go to an S for HANA system now, which is oh sorry, down here. Um, so now we're in, in an S for HANA system, and let's say we want to create, must create, um, 
couple of, a couple of catalogs. Before we go there, we, we have to understand what we want to build, right? So again, in the role profiler, I mentioned that before. We have a lot of different reports. I was showing the the S4 HANA reports. We also have specific reports for Fiori. Um, so let me point on one here. Um, that's called map map use T codes to Fiori apps. Um, let me just run that before I before I talk you through. So basically, we can look into different um, a, a different data source. So for example. Um, SD03N directly from your system. If you have usage data there for a couple of months, we can take that. If you have it somewhere else, we can you know, use file upload, different different things. Um, let me just use the SD03N. So here we have a little more than a year worth of usage data. And let's just analyze, let us analyze very quickly. And what we now can do is basically what we can see here is based on the Fiori apps library, so that all those apps app recommendations that you can download manually and then process them in Excel, we have here in the tool. And what it basically shows here, let me just um, toggle the full screen on, we can basically see different users use certain transactions. Here again, I'm in a demo system, we don't have too much usage, but at, at some of it at least. So here, for example, we can see that particular user here use different transactions like BP, FP02, FP03, OP52, and so on, XT03. Those are up-up transactions. I mean, here we're in an S4 system, but we can run the same report on ERP as well. Um, we can see how often they used it. So for example, that user used FP03 28 times. So that looks like a transaction that he was using on a, on a daily basis or more often at least. Um, and then we can see what would be a Fiori app that we can use to replace or enhance um, that the the sub GUI transaction. So, for for example, FP03 to replace that, there's three different apps available in S4 HANA based on a current release. If you have different releases, there might be a, a fourth one or only two. Here we are looking at the 1909 um, release. So, for example, there's three apps that potentially can replace FP03. And those are the three apps. Also, the Fiori apps ID, because that's what I, you know, wanna. That's basically the, the indicator or the ID that I can use to go back to the Fiori apps apps library to find more information about the app. All the information we have in the tool. So here, very quickly, you know, with, with just one click, you can analyze all our usage data for all our users. If you have thousands of users, you will analyze them all at once in a, in a couple of seconds, and we can see what's a potential replacement or a re yeah, replacement application in Fiori. And this could be a very good starting point, you know, for, for someone to, um, you know, identify what apps we should enable and implement when we go to Fiori. Because, you know, that's maybe, especially when we do a Fiorization, that's the apps that we probably want to consider looking into whether we can implement them or not. And that's a very good starting point here. Then again, not just figuring it out what needs to be done. Um, we also want to, you know, mass create and mass, uh, you know, mass update certain things. Um, let's say we want to mass create catalogs, and I'm just jumping here from a few examples to to show you. Let's say we want to mass create catalogs. Remember um, when we maybe quickly go back um, to what we discussed in in the last webinar. When we go back to the, um, for example, to the Launchpad Designer. Or, or the comp content manager. And then the content manager, for me to create um, a catalog, and as soon as it, as it loads here, we have to do the one by one. So I, I type in a name, I give it the description, and then I can create. And then I have to make the, you know, the I have to reference the, tar the, the tiles and the target mapping into the catalog. So all very manual. So how about we go to Excel, open up here my Excel file, and I provide two columns. Column A is the catalog, the technical name, and column B is the description. So for example, here I want to add another one. I call it C underscore BC for business catalog. Call it, I don't know, uh, ACC maybe, on call it as a webinar, and that's for accounting demo. So I, I just create, you know, in Excel, as many as I want. That's just basically the, the blank naked catalog that I'm going to create. I save that as a CSV file. That's all we do. We can also use the Excel Excel um, file type. It's a little slower. CSV is much faster to process. So we usually we, we save it as a CSV file and then we process. So we save that. 
Um, let me quickly, yep, let me just go back to the system. Where is it here? And then we go back to our tools. We have a tool. This is the wrong system. Sorry about that. Go back to our um, S4HANA system or our Fiori um, system that we want to create those catalogs. So it will basically be the front end um, um, server, front end system where we create the catalogs. And then here we have a tool called the role replicate. The role replicate is a, a suite of tools basically that allows us to mass, yeah, do everything in mass. So we can must create roles, must replicate roles. We can we can must create and must change users. We can must create transactions, different things. But now we also have a lot of tools for Fiori. And so, for example, here we can create catalogs. We can assign tiles and target mappings to catalogs. We can do certain different modelings of of catalogs and roles and different things. So there's a lot of functionality here that I just um, initially mentioned. Just to show you, when we create catalogs, we always have and all the tools here basically work with an input. So here we have an info button, very straightforward. It basically says you can mass create Fiori catalogs by preparing an Excel file. And all it needs is, is, two, is two columns. Basically column A is the technical name, column B is the description. We hit here the button and then we select our file. So I can either use the Excel file or I use the CSV. I just used the CSV. I didn't update that one with the accounting, but the other two are in there just to show you. So basically I select my CSV file. It now wants to create a catalogs. Um, and what it asks me here first is to which transport do you wanna write those catalogs? Because we remember we create them in dev and then we transport them up. In the content manager, I have to actively add a catalog to a transport. Here it asks me, you know, proactive basically, where do you wanna put it? So select my catalog, say here, okay. And then what the tool does, just takes a second, it basically tells me catalog has been created. So now, you know, in a few seconds, two catalogs uh, are created. What's important, whenever we do changes or whenever we do create something, we're always using SAP standard APIs. So everything we do with the tool is 100% standard. So now if I go, if I go to, for example, the, um, the, the Launchpad designer, or I go to the content manager. Let me maybe go there for a second. Um, all those catalogs will be 100% available here. So if you use the tool for an implementation and then later on you decide not to use it anymore, you can uninstall the tool and you can use everything that you created in SAP standard. So here, if we um, search for them, I think we call them like that, you can see the two catalogs I just created are here and I can now start and use them directly here. Okay, so that's important um, to remember. Let me go back to Role Replicator. Like I said, so we can create catalogs and now we can assign tiles and target mappings. So if I know which tile I want to assign, again, I can, for, first of all, I can download a set of, of, of available tiles and then map them in Excel, can do different things there to mass assign now those tiles and target mappings to the catalogs I just you know, mass created. That's one thing that, that we can do. What I wanna show you is we also have modeling functionalities available. So for example, I can, um, we call it a catalog tile to target mapping modeling. And what I basically can do here is I can now take the catalogs I created and I can also use a reference catalog, for example, a technical catalog from SAP to, to see and create and fine tune and, and add the, the tiles and target mappings um, automatically as well. So let me show you that. So here for the catalogs, we use the ones we created. Let me just, um, it's the first two basically that we created. I use those two. And then I use um, another catalog that I maybe already created, um, or like I said, an SAP standard technical catalog. Um, I don't want to load a, a technical catalog because usually they are, have a hundred, couple of hundred apps. So I just used one that Jennifer already created that we can use here. So basically my two, blank ones plus one that already exists. Again, can be a technical catalog or can be a custom one, however you wanna, however you wanna do that. It's basically my input. And now what I can do is I can execute. It takes a couple of seconds to, um, you know, to go through those um, catalogs and see what's in there. And as soon as it loads, we can basically see here, there's different um, tiles and target mappings that are part of one or, or many catalogs. So here, 
right now that's my demo Jenny that's basically my source or my technical catalog that I want to use and then I can see here for my FI and for my CO catalog I don't have any apps yet because I, I it's only you know I only created it and I didn't do anything with it I didn't load anything so what it now shows me basically is I don't have those apps here in those um, catalogs again I can use that information to export to Excel and say okay all those I want to add to them here that's basically I can export you know put it into the format the CSV file again and then I do that the other uh, button I was just showing where we can you know must maintain it now or I can also do it from here so let's say yeah for finance they should have managed banks so there's an app called managed banks I want to add that if I just want to do it directly here I can just double click here it, it will ask me do you want to add this tile to the catalog I say yes I want to do that once I click OK and now we can see that the uh, the field here changed to green so now basically it means that that tile and target mapping has been assigned to that to that catalog so like I said we can do it in mass we have different tools like here where we can have a nice overview that's for one this is a very good overview as well if I just want to know which app is in which catalog I can run them all and then export and I can see what we know which apps are where or I, I can use it to fine-tune so I for example for myself I use the report to fine-tune so maybe I have I have a technical catalog already built or a business catalog already built that contains all my um, finance um, applications and then I have two or three different finance catalogs maybe for a finance reporting or finance different job function and I maybe just want to see oh I missed one app so let's just edit that let's just edit there so that's the modeling we do and like I said here just double click on now here it's more manual it's like one by one if you want to add them all in one we download and I think here we had oh that's already there it's this the same the same app I didn't see that um if I do another one it will work um or like I said I can export it to Excel and then you know use the mask tool to must do that in mass whether here I do it more one by one so different ways um, to update those catalogs and now important if I go back to the um, content manager again if I just go back here to the content manager and I'll show you that again here just a second as it loads the content manager always takes a little bit to load that's SAP standard um, if we load that and we look into our FI and I select it here we can now see those apps that I um, added through our modeling tool to now you know properly show up here in SAP standard and again if you want to do the same thing here you know we would have to go to the catalog find it and then you know create a reference and add it back to the to that to the catalog versus on the other screen it's you know on one page I just double click and adds it back probably one of the questions will be you know from our pre previous webinars we remember we always want to use the reference so if I but maybe switch the screen here again so if I add an app like for example um, delivery performance to, to a catalog we remember we don't want to add that manually we always want to use a reference um, even if I use it here from another um, catalog that our tool will always use the SAP technical catalog to reference from so if I say here add that delivery performance to my CEO catalog for example and I double click here it will always use a proper reference from SAP's original technical catalog. So if SAP does a change to the catalog with the next support package, I will always have those changes also reflected in my catalog. So that's important to understand. We're always using SAP's best practice to do things the way we automate and simplify here. That's important to understand. Perfect. So there's a lot of different tools, um, like I mentioned, you know, to must create, to must assign tiles. To catalogs in mass we have different modeling tools you know for example here I was just showing the one how we can model catalogs we can also um, model the role to catalog assignments so if you have you know we don't know to which SAP roles it should go we can also help you model that also from a user access perspective so we have different modeling tools that help us you know building and fine-tuning um, the Fiori but then also we have other stuff 
you know, for example, we can we can must translate and must change text. We can we can look into personalizations, different things. Remember from our first or second session, we, or even last time in, in, when we talked about the debugging, I said, you know, personalization. Do we do we allow um, personalization on groups? You know, where a user can decide to take an app out or add another app to a cat uh, to a group. That sometimes causes problem because they remove an app. And then doesn't show up on the launchpad anymore. And then they, they, you know, they submit a ticket and say, "Hey, I don't have access anymore. It's an authorization problem." So, like for example, personalizations like that, we can here we have a report where we can run it. And then we can basically see, you know, who has done personalizations. And I can see here, for example, a user like Karsten here. He removed for one group. He removed, um, or he did a, a, he changed the personalization or did a configuration change on on that group for himself. And if and if he let's say Carsten calls in and says, "Hey, I don't see that app anymore. Y you screwed up." You say, mm, "Not so much." You run the report. You say, "Here, okay, I delete that and you delete the personalization." When the user logs on again, you know the group will look completely like it like it used to look, and he will see that app again. So all the stuff like that that doesn't exist in SAP that you you know you wouldn't have a way to uh, administrate from 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 your perspective. We have here as tools to help you also when it comes to you know finding and and you know finding and and, and solving those um those problems so to say. So different tools um, that we have available. I mean, I was just showing two now. You know, given the, given the time, we have different uh, tools available like the role designer. We will have a specific webinar about the role designer as well. Where we can, you know, not only create catalogs and and you know assign and must change the catalogs, but then also, you know, deal with the roles. Because at the end of the day, we also have to deal with the roles. But that's an entire different topic, you know, to how do we bring that back um, into our existing role concept? For that, we have the role design. So we have a lot of different tools that you know help you from start to finish when it comes to do and deal with Fiori. The the challenge again, when we, when we, you know, especially when we do a fiorization, I mean, the must-haves are probably easier to to control. And you know, let's say you move to S4, you don't necessarily want to do fiori; you just do the whatever you need to do because it needs to be done. That's probably straight more straightforward because it's only so many apps. If you do a fiorization, then the number of apps you want to implement becomes significantly more, especially there are thousands of apps available. Um, you know, most of our we have we have customers where we did you know fewer implementations was three, four, five hundred apps that were required, and so it's a lot of that's a big number that you know we have to basically you know build the catalogs and then also authorize that authorize the end users for it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, a lot of data as well that needs to be processed. And that's that's a that's a big challenge as well. Um, again, without any tools, difficult. Um, and complex to to find out what are the requirements of Fiori, what I, what apps do we need, do those apps work? All that stuff we also have in the tools, you know, to find out whether all the the services are activated, whether it's in the roles, whether a, we have a, you know, um, maybe you have done a change in in a catalog or in a group that's not reflected in in PFCG. Remember, in PFCG we have that detail button we can press to kind of refresh the catalog if there was a change. Let's say you change a catalog. You added another app, but it didn't update the PFCG role. Then the user will not, you know, will not be able to run the app. So you have to update the PFCG role. Again, that's a one. That's basically in P, in SAP sense a manual step. So you have to go into PFCG, open the role, go into change mode, click the detail button that will refresh the 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 catalogs, and then you will see oh, there's one more app that you have to add. That's very manual. You have to do it for every single role with our tool. You just run it against all the roles. Maybe I just showed it very quickly to show you. That just takes one second to show. Not sure if I haven't prepared anything. I always do something on the go. Um, for example, uh, here. Let me talk full screen. So here I only have one role that has basically one catalog. Um, there's different, if you scroll to the right a little bit, there's different um, services or different Fiori applications that use different services. I mean, here a couple of are front-end services and then others are different and I don't know exactly what it is. But basically what it shows me here is some of those objects that come from the catalog 
are not in the role menu. So here we can see that that catalog or that yeah that, that it's just one catalog that uh, ABA bases all has basically 15 applications. We can see that here because only one. Um, and for, out of those 15 um, catalogs, that's basically only two are maintained in the role menu. So 13 were added to the catalog, but were not never updated to the role. And so here I, I you know I see that and I can you know and I can also do the mass update for all my roles. I mean here it's just the one, but let's say I have a hundred roles I need to update. All that stuff you know we can do with the tools. And that makes it so much easier not not only to implement but also maintain Fiori in the long term. And if I go back to um, the slide deck again, you know, that's basically the last point. You know, the those the maintenance in PFCG is a little bit tricky, especially when there are changes. Um, SAP is trying to keep up there, you know, with the with the customer demand. There's you no know, different SUIM reports now where we where we can look into different things. But you know, SAP is, is still very much behind there um, of stuff that we need when we when we do such an implementation. That's the advantage we have. So we you know we are quicker than or we can be quicker than SAP, providing tools to our customers that go through the hoops of, of implementing, and that's why we have all those reports available. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, then again, just to, to wrap it up, basically, there's a lot of advantages using tools. I mean, we're now you know definitely showing the XMS, which is our tool, but there's probably other tools out there as well. I always recommend if someone you know goes through a Fiori implementation or even if it's just an S or if it's a S for HANA migration or a role redesign, you know, utilize tools because it makes it so much more efficient. You have better insights. Um, you know, it's not because we do things better. Again, it's more we're more efficient. We want to save you time and money at the end of the day by doing things, you know, quicker and, and more efficient. Um, but then also, you know, from a also from a quality perspective. You know, using tools and using automation tools makes it also e makes it also better from a quality perspective because we do, you know it's less likely we introduce you know typos and, and stuff because the tool does a lot of things for us. Um, you know the creation of roles will be yeah more efficient but also better in the sense of you know following SAP's best practice, putting everything through the role menu, utilizing SAP 24, all that stuff comes with the tool because the tool you know is is was told and was instructed to do it the way it should be done. If we tell someone, a person, you know, one time you do it like that, and the other way, you know, other time you do it like that, and then you do all shortcuts, the tool doesn't do that. So it's always, you know, best practice following best practice, and that's that's basically, um, you know, the most important thing about using a tool. Um, here, just again to to wrap it up, um, especially when you do a fiorization where we have a lot of transactions that must be matched with the Fiori apps. A library to see you know the recommendations of what apps are available to replace um, GUI, sub GUI transactions. We have that information in the tool that's always updated. You can also update yourself. So if you you know because if you ship your tool and you have another version, you always have the delta as well. So we're always up to date. Um, we can refresh the data from the Fury apps library automatically. Um, all that you know can be done. And then also you know when it comes to authorizing. The, the roles, authorizing the users, also role testing is, is a big topic. We didn't even talk about that today. You know, we can help with simplifying and somewhat automating role testing as well, especially also when we do an S4HANA um, migration or we do a fewer implementation because there's still authorizations we have to deal with, especially on the back end. We talked about that last time when we you know, talked about the authorization debugging. There's still a lot of authorizations we have to build and deal with on the back end. Um, and that the tool is also very well capable of helping you, you know, how to find what's missing and where it has to go, how it needs to be updated. We have to be others with SD4 or directly enroll, all that, all that information that you, you know, usually find out manually, the tool will tell you out of the box. So different things um, on that side as well. Um, again, and this is really just a recap, I mentioned like five times already, I feel like. Um, again, the use transactions we can also map. It's a recommendations, you know, from a migration perspective. You know, we can utilize the apps, the apps library. We can utilize the simplification list to see, you know, what does what is a replacement application for a transaction. With the role replicate and the role designer, we can also make those changes, not just tell you. But we can make the change. We can build the catalogs, build the groups, do the assignments, put the catalogs into the roles. 
So basically the entire, the entire cycle we can cover with tools. Those are the three main tools here that, that I've mentioned. Note that utilizes the data, your input, and then also processes it automatically. Um, with that being said, I, I hope I was able to show how we can help you with automation tools to you know, simplify everything we talked about in the past. Um, you don't have to use automation tools. Like I said, it just makes your life so much easier to do, especially like for myself and, and Jenny and everyone at our, at our company who does fewer implementations and as for HANA migrations, we don't want to miss the tool anymore because it makes it so much, so much easier. It's less likely to forget stuff and it makes it so much quicker and less headache basically to, to implement. And that's all I, I tell everyone always look at least into tools, give it, give it, give it a shot to see whether it's a fit. Um, our tools are, and I mean, I'm, I'm saying that now, but um, if, if you want to learn more about that from a, from a return on investment perspective, we are we're very um, we're very good in that perspective. So most of our our customers, you know, they they report return on on the, on, the, on invest on a project basis, um, or you know if you just do it you know for your um, you know channel automation work usually within less than a year. So from that perspective, it's very efficient um, also to use to use a tool. So return on invest is, is definitely given. Um, I have here again the links to the previous webinars. If you want to learn more, you know, or you haven't seen them yet or didn't follow those, um, you know, basics about Fiori and the challenges and solutions that are available. That's all SAP standard. Last time we, sp we spoke about the debugging, and then today um, the automation tools. We have, like I said last time, if you are interested in learning more about Fiori or S for HANA migration, we offer different customer workshops. Um, you can also book SAP trainings or you can um, contact us directly. We can also do um, customer specific workshops, which are very um, well received, um, are very, very well received in the past because then we can really focus on your need. So just come and talk to us. Here's our sales email. You can also, you know, reach out to myself or Michael directly. Um, and then Michael, as my, Michael mentioned initially, we have um, a webinar scheduled in February for um, of, of, for our sub IDM customers. So if you use IDM and you know you also would like to have Fiori apps for IDM, because you know, for those of you that know IDM, those web DIM pros are not very nice um, and are not very user friendly. Um, that's a nice way with Fiori UIs where you, you know, within a few days, and really it's a few days, two, three days, you can have um, you know Fiori UIs up and running on your IDM. Um, you know, that, that's the next webinar. If you're interested in that, if you use IDM or if you don't use it yourself, but you know your company does it, you know, maybe pass it on to your colleague um, because that's that will be a very good presentation and demo of how you can implement fewer UIs for IDM. With that being said, Michael, are there any questions? I think we have two minutes yeah, left. Yeah. Yes, yes, they are. Um, so I'm going to read a couple out here. So the, the first one is, is there an overview of the must haves? Uh, I'm aware of the bank maintenance. So you initially, you know, talked about some of the Fury apps that you must implement because there is no legacy transaction to do it on S4. But is there like a list or an overview of those must haves? Um, it's, it's definitely mentioned in the simplification list. So on those 1200 pages, it is mentioned. Um, I'm not sure if there's a list from SAP that shows it must haves. In in our tools, certainly we have that list. We can see where there's no re or where the only replacement and a true replacement is the Fiori app. I'm not sure if SAP has any documents that will show you that out of the box, but it's definitely in the simplification list. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, then number two is um, how do you create a Fiori app from a standard transaction? Let's say SU01. Okay, so um, basically, uh, maybe I'd be easiest what might be to to share a guide. There's a there's a there's a good blog post and there's a guide from SAP that we can find on the on the um, as in a sub note that basically says you know what how you have to create that. It's basically you need a target mapping that basically calls your sub GUI the, the GUI transaction, and the transaction must be uh, enabled or like HTML enabled, which most of them are. ACP send transactions are for sure, but if you have a custom transaction, it would work as well. Um, we just circulate and, and send out the, the guide to that, um, but it's pretty straightforward. That's just something you have to do on, on Fiori on the front end, where basically you have to build uh, the, the, the tile and the target mapping that calls that, 
and two or three other things that need to be done, but it's pretty straightforward and, and super easy to do. And I'll just, okay. we'll just share that. Mm -hmm. And another question from actually two, I guess, uh, our existing customers uh, was, uh, what version of the XMS did you show today? Was it SP16 already or SP15 still? That was SP16, the latest and greatest. Okay. All right. Um, then we have a thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And then we have one that just says mass, um, I guess, replication capabilities for groups. It just says mass for groups, question mark. I assume the question is, do we have mass processing capabilities for groups? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, then another one is, is there a report to show which tiles and mappings are in which custom catalog? Yes, so basically that's 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 exactly the one I was showing earlier in, in Role Replicator. We could use that one, um, you know, that I was just showing here where we basically can, um, oops, no, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, here is the modeling. We could use that one where we, you know, we could do all the C star. I think if I just if I just run it now, it will it will take too long because we have a whole bunch of, um, but it's basically the same as here. You can do C star, and then it would show you all that. I hope that answers it. But that's basically, you know, where we can see it um, here. All the, the the tile target mappings you can add. You can change the layout to add more columns. I mean, here we're just showing the ones that are important for us, which is the semantic object and the action and the Fiori ID. Um, and then we can see in which in which of the catalog it is. And you know. If you add more catalogs, there will be more columns, obviously may also more apps. And with the green indication, you see in which one they are. And then you can also export that to Excel to, to use that. That's just one of the reports we can use for that. Okay. And that was it. A couple of more thank yous. And I think we should be all set and we are two minutes over. So we again appreciate your time uh, today. You're gonna get an email or probably more than one with uh, link to recording with a copy of the slide deck and uh, answers to all the questions in writing. I mean, we answered pretty much all of them, but we'll still um, you know, put them in a spreadsheet as well and send it out in a couple of days. Thank you very much. And don't forget to sign up for our upcoming webinar. Uh, you'll find all the information on um, not only the slide deck here, but also um, on our webpage. If you go to Exciting US and look for webinars there, you'll have a sign up link there as well. All right, thank you very much and see you next time.